Hi, this is Gordon Parker from Michigan Tech, and in this video I'm going to go over how to generate the differential equations for a nice little rotational system. So let me draw a picture of it. Uh, we have a disk connected with a magical massless shaft to another disk. This one has inertia J1. This one has inertia JM, and our massless shaft has a torsional spring coefficient of K1. Now JM is held in place with a couple blocks that it can rotate around that are anchored, and they generate a little bit of viscous damping between JM and the fixed support, and that'll be denoted with the uh, viscous damping coefficient BM. And let's say that we also have imposed onto this disk an externally applied torque. We'll just call it tau m. Okay, now before we jump into generating the equations of motion with free body diagrams and such, it's worth just taking a look at it and getting a feel for what we should end up with. Right, we have two disks, so we should have two uh, second-order differential equations, and there should be some coupling between them via this uh, torsional spring coefficient, K1. Okay, with that very brief overview, let's go ahead and abstract our free body diagrams a bit, just with a couple of circles, one representing the disk JM, the other one the disk with inertia J1. And I'm just going to somewhat arbitrarily specify these directions as being our positive displacements or positive rotations. As soon as I do that, I can apply my inertial moments in the opposite direction. Great. Um, now let's see, what else can we do? Let's take care of this externally applied torque. Uh, I'm it's a little bit unclear from how I've drawn it, but let's just say that that direction, this direction, is in the positive theta m direction. So here's my externally applied torque, tau m. We have a um, viscous damping coefficient, bm, and that's going to act in the opposite direction of the positive displacement, theta m, actually theta m dot, and so it's going to be like so. There we go. And the only other uh, moment that we have to take care of is due to the, uh, the flexible shaft that connects the two disks. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, one way to go about figuring out how the torque is shared between JM and J1 is to impose on each of these disks a small positive displacement, preferably not equal, because if they're equal displacements, then of course the um, uh, moment due to this torsional shaft will be zero. So let's give J1, um, let's just call it a large positive displacement, and we'll give JM a small positive displacement. That's completely arbitrary. I could have done it the other way, but I just decided to do it that way. So J1 has a positive large displacement, and JM has a small uh, positive rotation. So the effect of that torsional um, shaft is going to be to try to pull JM in the positive direction. And of course there'll be an equal and opposite moment happening on the uh, J1 disk. And the magnitude of that moment is going to be K1 theta 1 minus theta M. We can do a quick sanity check on that by imagining that theta m is equal to zero. So not only is it small, it's super small. And theta one is this large positive displacement. In that case, this torque, this moment, is going to be pulling theta m around in this positive direction. And it's going to be exerting a um, resistive moment on J1. And that makes sense. So let's go ahead and sum up all of our, our moments. So we'll work with the, the uh, JM uh, disk first. So JM theta M double dot. I like to check them off. Um, 
plus bm data m dot um, minus k1 theta 1 minus theta m minus tau m equals 0. Got it. And now for the other disk, it's fairly boring. J1 theta 1 double dot, that's that one, plus k1 theta 1 minus theta m equals zero. Done. Put a box on it. Now once I have those differential equations, I can have all sorts of fun with them, right? I could can, I could put these into state space form. I would, if, uh, if I wanted to do that, I'd end up with four states. I could simulate them using something like MATLAB or Simulink. Uh, I could convert these into the Laplace domain and then do a little algebra and come up with a transfer function. Maybe between, oh, I don't know, theta 1 uh, and tau, so the output over the input. Let's say the output of interest was theta 1 and the input was um, the motor torque uh, or the externally applied torque tau m. All kinds of great things I can do with this. But for now, we'll just stop there. So thanks for watching, and again, this is Gordon Parker from Michigan Tech.